Welcome distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. On behalf of Command Sergeant Major David Lee Jr., Director, the Sergeant's Major Academy, welcome to the graduation ceremony for the Sergeant's Major course, Distance Learning. Ladies and gentlemen, the invocation will be given by our chaplain, followed by the playing of the national anthem. Please pray in your faith as I pray in mine. Let us pray. Lord God, we just pause right now, thanking you for this opportunity to celebrate the graduates of the Sergeant Major course, Distant Learning. We thank you for their challenges. We thank you for their commitment. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for their integrity and the ability to sustain and maintain as they dealt with these courses. Now, Lord, I ask that the things that they learn not go in vain, but that the things they learn, they utilize in their current position and then some. Allow them to be the effective leaders, but most of all, to always lead from the front. We ask your blessing upon their lives now and forevermore. Bless them and their families as they continue to do great things, but most of all, continue to do it in excellence. Amen. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red land, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who say does that star spangled banner yet Good morning. On behalf of the Commandant of the Non-Commissioned Officer Leadership Center of Excellence, Command Sergeant Major Jason Smith, welcome to today's virtual graduation. My name is Command Sergeant Major Todd Shirley, Deputy Commandant of the Center of Excellence. I'm honored to be here today to provide you some opening remarks about this day. To be a graduate of the Sergeant's Major course is a once-in-a-lifetime achievement that most will not attain. To be clear, only 1% of the soldiers who enlist in the Army will ever make it this far. That says a lot about you as a person, a soldier, a professional, and a leader. Congratulations, you made it. As a graduate of non-resident Sergeant Majors course, Class 36, I know what you went through to complete this milestone. You went to work each day, doing the job that you were trained for whether it was for the Army, like myself, or your civilian job, like many of you in the Guard and Reserve. Then you would come home to your studies, spending long hours in the night reading, writing papers, doing research, practical exercises, taking tests, all while sacrificing quality time with your family and your friends. Your road to success was much longer than our resident students but you have accomplished the same goals, learned the same things, got the, t the same 1059. You are now part of the alumni who can proudly say, I'm a graduate of the Sergeant's Major Academy, a member of Class 46. As we all know, things change with time. We as an Army, an educational institution, must adapt the way we educate senior NCOs to keep up with the changing doctrine, regulations, lessons learned, and new, new technologies. Not to mention the changing paradigms in social economics and global nation states, both friends and foe. I can tell you, the course that you have completed 
is much different from the one I took 10 years ago. The rigor is far greater than what I experience, and the course requirements today are on par with the resident course, not two years behind like it used to be. This is a college level course that rivals most universities of today. The Sergeant's Major course provides you the tools to develop your critical reasoning, critical thinking, and decision-making skills. It takes you from a tactical level of thinking to an operational strategic perspective in order to prepare you for leadership positions in organizations executing unified land operations. It also prepares you for leadership positions and joint assignments, as well as battalion, brigade, and division through echelons above core, staff sergeant major, and command levels. Be proud of your accomplishment. Take what you learn and be the leader you would want to be led by. Live the Army values and lead by example. Ultima, Army Strong. The Sergeant's Major Course, Distance Learning, is a 24-month program of instruction designed to prepare senior non-commissioned officers for assignments in positions throughout the Department of Defense. These students have successfully completed their final requirements of the Sergeant's Major Course. On 17 May 1972, General William Westmoreland, the Army Chief of Staff, approved the creation of a senior level course for the non-commissioned officer education system. General Ralph E. Haynes, Jr., the commander of the Continental Army Command, also favored its creation and issued General Order 98, officially creating the Academy effective 1 July 1972. The first class started six months later in January 1973. When the Sergeant's Major Academy began operations, it already planned to offer a distance learning version of the Sergeant's Major course for National Guard and Army Reserve non-commissioned officers. The first distance learning class began with 55 students in July 1974 and graduated two years later in July 1976. Less than half of those who started graduated, with only 22 students completing the course. Today, each class has hundreds of students and a graduation rate of 75% and commonly includes regular Army non-commissioned officers. Three Air Guardsmen have also graduated the program since its inception. Through most of its history, the course has been called the Sergeant's Major Distance Learning Course, but for a period in the 1990s, it was officially known as the Corresponding Studies Sergeant's Major Course. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker. Good morning, Class 03-21. I'm Command Sergeant Major Paul Yings from the 7th Mission Support Command here in Kaiserslautern, Germany. I'm honored to be your guest speaker today, and I certainly wish I could be there in person. I'd like to start by saying congratulations on, on graduating the Sergeant's Major course. Uh, just being selected is a huge honor, but graduating is such a satisfying feeling. I also took the uh, course via distance learning several years ago, and that was it, during Class 36. I know the requirements have grown significantly and the course has become much more difficult, especially when you're trying to balance a job, a family, and a tough demanding course such as this. Uh, so great job to all of you. Uh, you can really be proud of yourselves. I want to take a couple minutes today uh, to talk about a couple of topics, but the main focus is on leadership itself and where you as a sergeant major or command sergeant major fit into that picture. Uh, Strong leadership is more important than ever right now. We have a lot of things going on within our Army. Uh, the requirements never get any fewer, and there's just some, some real key topics that, that we need to focus on. Now that you've graduated this course and made it to this level, it's certainly not a time to, say, to think that I made it and just take a knee and sit back and, and watch others do their job. This is a time where senior NCOs at the highest levels need to step up and, and really engage themselves. You've heard a lot recently, I'm sure especially through your, your uh, academy instruction about the three corrosives, which include extremism, sexual assault and uh, harassment, and also suicide. These are three very sensitive, uh, very tough areas that we as leaders 
have a lot uh, to take care of and, and to deal with. And this especially holds true with our junior leaders. Uh, your role in that is extremely important. These aren't only leadership issues, but they're cultural issues within our units as well. And specifically, as I just mentioned, when we look at the first line leader level, that gets down to that squad and, and team leader piece. There's a, a certain lack of training, understanding, and especially experience when it gets to that level and when it comes to tough topics like extremism, sharp, and suicide. <coughs> I'm not here today to give you a class on, on the three corrosives or focus all of my attention on that. What I am here though to do is to explain how I feel your role pertains to getting first line leaders engaged, making sure that they are fully trained and understand their job, and can go out and make sure that we are establishing a culture and a climate within our units that don't permit these type of behaviors. Uh, when we look at first line leaders, first li a first line leader at that squad or team leader level are typically responsible for their three to five soldiers. The same thing holds true when you look at a platoon sergeant. They typically have four squad leaders reporting to them. And at the first sergeant level, they'll typically have three to four platoon sergeants reporting directly to them. In those areas, <coughs> it, it's very important that that's understood and that we are exercising each level of leadership as it was meant to be in order to make sure that, that they know their job, they understand their job, and they're building strong and successful teams below them, meaning their squads, platoons, and companies. So that brings me into TIMS. I'm sure you've all probably uh, are fully aware of what TIMS is. This is my squad. This is an initiative that comes down all the way from the highest levels of the Army, the SMA himself, uh, Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston. The idea behind TIMS, and this can be applied at any level, but the things that go with that are establishing, as I mentioned earlier, a positive culture and climate within an organization. Getting those squad and team leaders enforcing standards gaining buy-in at that squad and team level. So, so young soldiers know that they're a part of a positive uh, organization, a positive team, a positive squad, a positive platoon that, will, that they can flourish in and they know that they're supported as long as they're doing the right thing. And that means looking out for one another. When we have leaders taking ownership, we can do anything. Uh, that we put our minds to. And, and when we have senior leaders that are making sure that we're setting up the lower levels of leaders for success, then this will happen automatically. So this also means achieving together. And that is everything from physical fitness to weapons qualification to warrior tasks and battle drills, uh, MOS technical training. All of these areas through a this is my squad mentality and taking ownership for my squad, thinking of it as this is my squad, not just a slogan out there, uh, leaders will buy in and they will continue to train their soldiers. They will continue or they will start to establish relationships built on trust and confidence with their soldiers. <clears throat> They will establish a culture that eliminates uh, things like sexual harassment, sexual assault, and extremism. They will also empower their first line leaders to produce. And, and, and given that opportunity, first line leaders will. But that comes with knowing the expectations of them and then being uh, taught how to achieve that as well as being held accountable for the results or lack thereof. This will not just happen overnight. It's a conditioning process. So once these expectations are fully laid out, uh, implemented, and understood, that's when that conditioning process uh, takes hold. That's when leaders at all levels, those sergeants first class as platoon sergeants, those first sergeants, and you as sergeants major are out inspecting what you expect. That means uh, making sure things such as in ranks inspections take place at formation. We don't see that, or at least I don't, very often uh, ac across the formations. I've pushed very hard to get things like that instilled uh, at the company level. 
And it doesn't just have to be the company level, but again, that's where these first line leaders really uh, step in and, and take charge and make sure things are happening. If you've got the, your first line leaders enforcing the standards, again, your unit will, will uh, flourish. Your readiness will also improve automatically. That means that when each first line leader is ensuring that their three to five soldiers are doing everything from making sure that they're medically ready to making sure that they're physically fit to making sure whatever the area is they're, that their uh, education is taken care of. <clears throat> the numbers will start taking care of themselves because they're doing their jobs and they don't have to just look at spreadsheets and, and see where deficiencies are. They will automatically uh, raise in a positive manner and things will get done. The other thing that we all have to understand is we will never eliminate things like extremism or sexual assault and sexual harassment through classes. We, mu we need to do much more and that's why I talk about the culture and the climate within our units. We need to have everyone, especially at those lowest levels, right where the rubber meets the road, those are the soldiers that, or MCOs, that have the, the largest impact on our junior enlisted soldiers and if they're leading by example, the other soldiers will follow. I'm not saying, in being unrealistic, that we will eliminate everything, but we will get a lot farther and we will have a much stronger uh, NCO Corps and a much stronger Army if we uh, implement those areas. The next area I'd like to touch on is retention. This also directly goes in line with leadership. I know in Compo 3 on the Army Reserve side, we've got a large gap uh, of vacancies at the Staff Sergeant and Sergeant First Class rank. <coughs> Uh, that gap is a, a tremendous amount of leadership missing within our formations. Without those uh, staff sergeants and sergeants first class, when you look at the number of potentially experienced platoon sergeants, uh, section sergeants, or squad leaders that are missing, that means that those junior NCOs or those junior enlisted soldiers aren't getting the experience and witnessing or observing what right looks like when it comes to uh, the leadership side. I, and that's a, a, a big potential in, in a lot of the observations that I've seen uh, across the formations that, that I've been a part of. Setting the right example and promoting this through our first sergeant and sergeant major channels Making sure that our junior NCOs know what right looks like gives us a much greater opportunity for them to uh, re-enlist in the, in the Army and stick around, bringing that experience for years to come, as opposed to starting over at those junior levels uh, continually. Just a couple other items before I close here today. More so, uh, general leadership expectations. Things that we, we hear a lot about and, and just need to be very focused on and aware of are things like leading by example. That means in all categories. That means appearance. That means physical fitness. That means making sure that you're green in all the categories that you need to be, whether it's medical readiness or pick another category, pick any category. <clears throat> it, it's very important. Being humble. You don't have to be the boisterous person out there all the time. Being a, a, an NCO, a senior NCO, or what people might refer to as that crusty old sergeant major. You don't need to be out yelling and hollering at soldiers all the time to get things done. <clears throat> Lead with humility. Be credible. Make sure that what you say is accurate. Make sure that what you're telling soldiers they can believe in and that your credibility uh, remains intact so when you do talk about something your soldiers know that uh, uh, you know what you're talking about. Be approachable. You don't want soldiers always jumping the, their chain of command or their NCO support channel in order to get to you, but you also want to make sure that soldiers aren't afraid to talk to you, to ask questions, uh, to inquire about things. That's all part of being a good leader, and it, it's actually a compliment that they want to come to you and, and ask you different things. Be honest. You have to let soldiers know uh, what the truth is. You need to uh, be able you know, to, to shoot straight with them so they know that they're, they're getting the right story. <clears throat> and one of the biggest things that, that I take away from when I was a young soldier and, and the things that I witnessed are understanding that it's okay for you as a senior leader not to have all the answers. 
it, it's fine to let soldiers know that you may have to get back to them on something or you may have to look something up. I, I reference regulations all the time or, or different messages that have come out. But it's, it's much more uh, positive for you and you are much more credible handling issues or not even issues but maybe inquiries or questions that way by letting a soldier know that you need to check into something or letting them know where the right resource is as opposed to always 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 having the right answer or if someone asks you something and you might be wrong it doesn't hurt uh, to admit you're wrong that's where a little humility comes in um, and you don't always have to have the right answer just because you are senior to someone and the, and the last thing is provide sound recommendations and that can be uh, to your boss it could be you know parallel or lateral or obviously to your your junior soldiers or subordinates it's critically important that you provide uh, good advice those sound recommendations and, and making sure that uh, th they understand what right looks like and that you are setting them on the path for success I know you're up for the task so get after it and uh, I want to say again congratulations I'm very proud of all of you um, thank you for your service and please make sure when you get home that you thank your families for their service and sacrifice and most of all always remember it's NCOs that make it happen thank you thank you for your inspirational words of encouragement to the graduating class during the course of study each student was evaluated on his or her ability, aptitude, performance, and potential for assignment to positions of greater responsibility within the Department of Defense. The following senior non-commissioned officers, having successfully completed all requirements set forth by the Sergeant's Major Academy, are now considered graduates of the Sergeant's Major course, Distance Learning. At this time, we will have the playing of the Army song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation ceremony. Congratulations to these graduates of the Sergeant's Major Course, Distance Learning.